Дорогие товарищи, доброе утро. Dear comrades, good morning. Today we have a popular anti-science issue to learn a couple of useful or useless things. First, how much the diesel Prado actually eats. Secondly, how much fuel is needed to burn the particulate filter. Well, and most important, for the sake of what all this is actually performed, we will analyze the dependence of fuel consumption on speed. Moreover, I know we will derive a formula that is suitable for all cars with an internal combustion engine. So if you do not have a Prado, do not switch anyway. To derive anything, first we need to get an array of source data. To do this, we wait for the dark night, get into the car, drive to the Moscow Ring Road and begin to win circles around it. The idea of using the Moscow Ring Road as a testing ground for measuring fuel consumption is stolen from my colleague blogger Pavel Kabanov. Thanks for that. I will add a link to his blog in the description, but be careful, it's in Russian. On the screen you see what is happening in an unreal, of course, time. Everything is greatly accelerated. A small side bonus for you. Those who are sure that Moscovites fly like scumbags everywhere, always and on all roads, just try to count how many cars have overtaken me during this test. I have chosen three speeds for testing. 80 kilometers or almost 50 miles per hour will allow me to drive free of charge in the city. 110 kilometers or 68 miles per hour is the top speed for Russian country roads. And 118 kilometers or 73 miles per hour is the limit for Moscow Ring Road. The conditions are as the following. We make three full circles along the Moscow Ring Road with the same points of start and finish. Each circle we go on cruise control at its own speed. 80, 110, 118 or 50, 68 and 73 in miles respectively. We check the speed with a calibrated device and check the fuel consumption using a car's board computer. Oddly enough, but it shows accurate figures. The same car, the same weather and the same road. We were going on the same fuel on one tank. The transmission and engine before the start of the experiment were completely warmed up. Therefore, the influence of cold oils is also excluded. A small interlude. While shooting this video, I faced some strange problems. I failed to complete the measurements during the first two rounds on Moscow Ring Road, as I finished in absolutely dead traffic jams due to serious accidents. Now you can see the picture. Please note, the time is 4 a.m. The third attempt ended more successfully. All the measurements were performed, as it turned out to drive all three laps on cruise control. Well, I only dumped it at the road repair size, which in general is not significant. But on a circle at the lowest speed, my video register failed to record anything. And before starting at the highest speed, I forgot to turn on the camera, so the image of the speedometer doesn't appear immediately. Sorry for that. A couple of interesting side effects. Firstly, it turned out that the car odometer lies. Do not confuse the odometer with the speedometer. It counts mileage but not speed. Moreover, the line degree of the odometer readings depends on the speed. The faster you go, the less distance it shows compared to the real mileage. The difference is rather small, but nevertheless, it's quite noticeable. If you have any explanations for these mysterious facts, please share it in the comments below. Unfortunately, I can't find any reasonable explanation to it. Now the second byproduct. It became clear how much fuel it takes to burn the particulate filter. The fact is, during one of the circles this burn-in turned on. It additionally stole some unknown amount of diesel fuel, but fortunately I have got a nace up my sleeve. I mean, a similar measurement at the same speed on the same ring without burning in. So the difference was 0.6 liters or 0.16 gallons. Simple arithmetic shows that if the burn-up occurs approximately once every 250 kilometers or 155 miles, the average operating fuel consumption for burning a particulate filter is approximately a quarter liter per 100 kilometers or 0.11 gallons per 100 miles. In general, it's not so scary, although not to say that nothing at all. Here we have the results. We put them on a chart. For 80, we put the one of the two results, which is without burning. And I also have measurements of consumption at two other speeds. We will use them as control points. In total, we have five points that tell us almost nothing. It's obvious that fuel consumption increases with higher speed, but this in general is nothing new. But let's move on and try to derive the formula. 
From the depth of mind, we will take out vague memories that air resistance grows in proportion to the squared speed. Air resistance is one of the main components in fuel consumption, and this means that fuel consumption must obey some similar law. So it should be a parabola to describe the dependence. And a parabola can be built with three points. We already have the three points, so let's work out a formula. On the left you see the formula for my car. How to get similar figures for your car, as well as what to do if you measure in miles per gallon, I will say a little later. Having a formula, we can build a graph. So we see that in fact the three midpoints coincided, because everything was deducted from them. The cutoff point at lower speed fell a little, and this is not surprising because at low speeds the physics is a little different. But the other control point at the highest speed responds our calculations with almost no visible differences from the schedule. In fact, there is a slight difference, but we can ignore it. Thus, we can conclude that our idea about the parabolic nature of the dependence of fuel consumption on speed is true. And using this formula, we can calculate fuel consumption at any speed. Well, at any reasonable track speed, let's say so. When driving around backyards, everything, of course, will be a little different. If this question prevents you from sitting still, there is a link to the Excel file in the description. You may conduct three measurements at different speeds, like I have done it, put the results into the file, and gain the formula for your own car and its appetite. This formula will allow you to enter the world of no limits, as you can calculate the predicted fuel consumption for other speeds of any kind. Well, for example, how much the car will eat if you accelerate it to 500 km or 300 miles per hour. And now a small appendix for our comrades who live overseas. The fact is that there is a kind of Babylonian curse in the automotive world. Some of us measure the distance in meters and kilometers, the others prefer feet and miles. Some measure fuel consumption in liters per hundred kilometers, the others enjoy juggling with miles per gallon. And so the given Excel file is completely useless for those of you who live in a different coordinate system. Therefore, especially for you, I took courage to make the second version of the file, with speed measured in miles per hour and fuel consumption in miles per gallon. Moreover, I hired a math PhD to recalculate my measurements in units you know better. It turned out that we have speeds of 50, 68 and 73 miles per hour and the consumption respectively at these speeds is 44, 31 and 27 and 7 tenths miles run on a gallon of fuel. The new graph of course looks differently, but let it not bother you. The essence surely remains the same. Please note the graph you like more in the comments below. So here it is. Hope all the above has enriched you with no depressing side effects. Next time we will warm up the automatic gearbox. Internet and YouTube in particular is full of various tips that contradict each other. How to warm it up. And we will do everything as usual. We'll take a thermometer and simply measure the temperature, how quickly the box heats up in different select modes. Good night and subscribe to... to what? To reach the gas station with no sudden problems чтобы доехать до заправки.